I grew up in a part of the United States where tornadoes were not entirely uncommon. It was uh, sort of a regular part of our lives, especially in the spring and summer, to hear those tornado sirens go off and know that we needed to get in the basement and things. And I remember talking to people about how much that had changed even when I was growing up back in the in the 80s and things about how much more warning they had now and I could tell these tornadoes were beginning to form and circumstances were there that back just before I was even born, a tornado had ripped through the town where I went to school, totally destroyed the school. And they it was it happened to be a Sunday. And they said, if it hadn't been a Sunday, lots and lots of people and lots of kids would have been killed because there had been no warning. They had really no warning system at that time. So it was just amazing the developments that allowed us to kind of know, okay, the, the conditions are right for a tornado, and now a tornado is, is forming, and we have the ability to alert people to that, get people into the basement or wherever they need to get for safety. And uh, and just that early warning system was such a, a lifesaver, literally a life-saving um, development in the community where I grew up that it made a significant difference in the way that we approach tornadoes and the, and the way that we were able to manage those things. And I was thinking about that recently as I was thinking about this idea of issues management in organizations. When we think about issue management for organizations, particularly in a public relations role, and just the idea that issues management is, um, is different than crisis communication is we're going to differentiate between the two here, but issue management is all about seeing those things coming. It's about the early warning signs and identifying those early indicators and, and having a system in place to not only identify those things, but deal with them. So let's take a look here at issue management in the context of public relations and see um, as public relations practitioners, how issue management really factors into the role of the PR person and, uh, and PR professional and uh, what we can do to, to manage those issues then. So again, to clarify, issue management, as we define it, is an anticipatory strategic management process that helps organizations detect and respond appropriately to emerging trends or changes in the socio-political environment. Okay, now, that's a mouthful, but basically the key ideas here are, first of all, it's anticipatory, meaning we're, we're trying to anticipate these things before they actually have them, trying to identify them early on. It's strategic. It's part of the management process, and it helps us both detect and respond appropriately to these things that, that populate whatever environment it is our organization exists in and is part of that community. So that's what we mean by issue management. It's important to note, again, as we kind of I, I kind of alluded to here, that issue management is proactive. It is not reactive. Issue management is something that takes place before things happen. We ought to be able to identify and work toward identifying, detecting these things before they become massive issues. So we need to be proactive in issue management. Crisis communication is more reactive. It's something has happened. Now we need to, to really try and, um, you know, manage that aspect of it. It was unforeseen or it took us by surprise, but issue management should be proactive, something that we are looking out for and, and able to detect early and respond to that and kind of manage it early on in the process. As we see the, the issue life cycle here, you can see that, first of all, that triggering event happens very early on. There's always that potential stage where you're always on the lookout for, okay, what are some potential issues that could come up here? But we see that that intensity at that level is very low. We're just kind of, you know, being aware of things, keeping an eye out for things and, and things that could potentially become an issue. But then when we see that triggering event, that ought to set us into motion here through that emerging stage. And, and we ought to be really focused on issue management there because once we get into the current stage, and especially in the crisis stage, we have very little control over those things. Okay. So, um, but we see that triggering event happens. Oh, I went too far. The, this is when, as I was saying, we ought to be in that, that mode of issue identification and management before this thing happens. And then especially, you know, right when it happens, that's our opportunity to jump on there and, and control the narrative, can kind of control the situation, limit the exposure, limit the damage um, that's being caused by this issue, this issue. So we ought to be really keyed in as PR people, both before that triggering event and then immediately after the triggering event in the potential and the emerging stages and into the current stage, of course. Um, but that's really when we have the uh, opportunity to identify and manage issues most effectively is in those early stages. Modern times, we see things like this first get picked up in social media. So the social media kind of happens not too long after the triggering event. Somebody's going to notice it, an individual's going to notice it, and then it starts to snowball a bit, right? It starts to pick up 
as more people start to to identify this on social media and pass it around and things, eventually it's going to hit that that critical mass, so to speak, or the the uh, the tipping point, as Malcolm Gladwell would call it, the tipping point of um, where ma mass media is going to pick up on it. If it gets to that stage, you're going to start seeing mass media coverage on on uh, news stations and on you know cable news and on your local news and on different things, and it's going to be really really widespread then as it gets out across these major mass media networks but uh but so in in the in-between phase there we have social media where it picks up people kind of again like that snowball rolling down the hill picks up a little bit at a time but then eventually it's going to become unmanageable in, in that media coverage area where you're going to have that unconditional acceptance you're, you're firmly in that crisis stage and so then you just have to uh, at some point it's going to die out though the next thing's going to come along either it's going to get fixed and start to go away then because people aren't interested when something gets fixed. They only like to see the train wreck. They don't like to see the damage that it caused for the, you know, the, the cleanup effort afterwards. Um, or it's just going to kind of lose steam and people are going to lose interest. The next big story is going to come along depending on the news cycle. And, and you'll, you'll enter that dormant stage then where things kind of cool off on that for whatever reason. But, um, so we see these these different stages and how it kind of unfolds in that issue life cycle. As I mentioned, you know, really our opportunity to influence things comes in those first couple of stages, the potential stage, the emerging stage, a little bit into the current stage, but really most effectively to, to manage these things and to to have an influence on these things in the beginning stages as a PR professional working with that organization. After that, our influence is somewhat diminished. It kind of takes on its own life. This narrative does. And, and, you know, people start to speculate on it and they comment on it. And then it's like a game of telephone where things get distorted and, and you really don't have any influence over that to a certain extent of what people are saying about it on social media. You can't control that. You can try and contribute to that and uh, kind of, um, you know, influence it by, pushing people a certain direction but the truth is our influence at that stage is is much much less uh and, and much more diminished than it would be early on in these things so we need to keep that in mind as we look at the overall issue life cycle so the issue management process just briefly for us as pr professionals uh, the the kind of stages that we can go through here in issue management and that process first is to identify we've talked about that a bunch now before things happen and certainly as they're happening just initially we need to be able to identify potential issues where could this run afoul where could this create a problem as best as possible and so that we can prepare for that before things even happen and maybe even head it off at the pass and and and, and cut it down before it becomes an issue but we need to be able to identify what are some of the issues that we're going to run into here and uh, what may pop up for us at different times so that we can be prepared for that then we need to track these things as they do happen we need to keep an eye okay this this is a blip on our radar screen now so okay, what's that let's track it let's see if it picks up any steam let's see if people notice let's see if people are talking about it see if it has any traction to go somewhere we need to be tracking these things and keep an eye on them and 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 track what people are talking about in general specifically as it relates to our organization but in general what are people talking about how are they talking about it how can we take advantage of that or or shield ourselves from that whatever it is so we need to track things just in general we need to analyze we have this data we have this information coming in we need to be able to analyze okay what is the issue here what can we do to um to to again manage it or to resolve it or whatever it is how can we use this to our advantage uh, or at least shield ourselves from the greatest damage um, related to, to this issue and so we need to put some thorough analysis in. we need to pull in people from different areas of the organization you know people from IT people from marketing people from sales people from these different things that bring different perspectives we need to analyze this thing from all angles to see how our customers and our communities are going to react and respond and what their expectations are of us and so we just need to be able to, to thoroughly analyze and think through what this issue is and how it relates to us as an organization and then of course we need to find some way to resolve that issue and uh, resolve it either by um, solving it and, and minimizing the damage related and, and, and caused by it or resolving it by taking advantage of it and using it to, to, to grow as an organization and to enhance our image and reputation as an organization. Um, whatever that resolution may be, we need to find some way to resolve that situation then hopefully to the benefit of the organization. And if not, then to the least detriment of the organization.
So obviously there's a lot of details here. We're just talking about what issue management is, and there's a lot of detailed information we could get into about how you go about these things. That's going to be a later discussion. Uh, but for now, we just wanted to, to dif differentiate, first of all, between issue management and crisis communication. First, that issue management is proactive. It's something that we should uh, be on the lookout for before it happens and certainly be working to manage it both before and immediately after an issue pops up. So it's proactive. Um, it requires some analysis and requires us to pull in people from all parts of the organization. And, and uh, so um, issues management is a major part of many uh, PR functions in an organization it ought to be on the radar of every PR person in an organization. If you have questions about issue management or about anything related to public relations in that realm, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there and chat with you about it there. In the meantime, I hope that you have a firmer understanding of issue management and are now better on the lookout for those things that, that pop up that, that could affect uh, the overall uh, productivity and effectiveness of the organization uh, which you represent in that public relations function.